So I want to show you guys, that's the bottom of a thread. This is a class 8 bolt. And this is another class 8 bolt right next to it. So in theory, they fall under the same um, specifications, right? They literally came off a factory. This is a factory bolt for a head bolt for a Chevy engine. So you're literally looking at the head bolts for a Chevy engine that's been cleaned up. Now they don't look like they're not chromed up. That's just the uh, reflective light. What I'm going to show you is for thread engagement. So let me back. I've got to hold this in my hand and look at it, the video at the same time. Do you see that the back side, it's only connect, it, the engagement is one sided. And that would be as you look at the video to the right. And as I slide down, it now bottoms out. But see to the left, it still has a gap there. Let me see if I can rotate this clamp a little bit. It's a gap. The forces are are in one direction, if you will, being pulled. Let's see if I can show you with this fine needle. Pushing this side. That side of the flank. It's not both sides. It's not acting in both directions. Um, it's one side. See as I slide it in? That's your thread engagement. Now take note of how the bottom of it, the root they call it. The root is the root would be the base right there. And as we push these together, the root would be let me try to do this in a microscopic level right there. See a little gap? So that's what that is, you know, you don't want it to engage. This is not a uh, friction fit like that. It's not a uh, class 5 bolt. This is a class 3 bolt connection. So this one is, I believe. So here we go. Watch the, the head of the bolt now. It's tapered. This, this section here is tapered. And I'm going to rotate this slowly in, and you'll see it engage the threads as if this was a, a bolt or a nut. Pretending this is a nut, you'll see the engagement, how it works in a helix format. So let's go ahead and do that. Got to get it steady, parallel, and I'm going to start rotating. Notice the lead to the, as you're looking at the video to the left, as it rotates, it's not, it's not fully seated down the bottom there. Okay, so I'm going to rotate now, and it's a helix. It's wedging its way down. Now look where we are. We're in the middle of the video as it's rotating its way down a ramp. That's your pitch. And this, your gulling, let me get that near. Your gulling would be the materials that cold fusion, they call it, would be the, uh, sometimes it's the material that locks in there. If you imagine, look how tight that is. If you would get some metals breaking off, that you could easily lock this in like a like a wedge, like a shim, like you shim your door. You can put a rag in your door if you imagine, and the door won't. It's hard to open just with a rag. Well, this would be the same thing except for now it's metal, and that was what they, a lot of people call cold fusion, cold fusing. So the crest meets the roof, uh, the, meets the root, but they usually miss it. See how it's uh, not quite touching? Now I'm going to rotate. Again, as I rotate, there are two helixes. One is the nut, and the other helix is on the screw, as if you can visualize that happening. And looking to the far left, you see it's just rotating and sliding down. It engages the the crest of the one thread below it, if you will, and or leading it, and then it slowly starts taping its way into the rest of the engagement. I'm just pushing it around to try to get you different angles of that. Now I'm going to slide back, and if you see that the tolerance is what is what matters. When I slide back, you want to look to see if you have all of your teeth engaging. Save the left, the first two on the left as you look at the video because they're tapered. They're not 
it's still it's the next three I'm concerned about. Those are your quality, your craftsmanship, your your see it? That's your and you see that to the left of that, it, it's not connecting. The forces are just on one side pushing it over, trying to shear it, if you will. And they can push into the other one and bond it in there pretty good, right? Depending on how, uh, what kind of class fit you have, friction, what kind of friction fit you're working with. Some of them can just keep rotating and shear those right off. Um, the cheaper bolt, the cheaper nuts and bolts. I'm sorry, cheaper bolts, screws, however you like to look at it. Look at the root again. You can imagine if you'd had the crest. I'm sorry, the crest. The crest would be the very top of these guys. Waiting for the video to come in. The crest is the very top. There we go. And I'll slide down a little bit. The very top. See how they're flattened? If they were sharp, you could imagine they would start cutting and weakening the ball. Or, or not. So you don't want them coming in contact like that. That's just creating uh, a scoring on the metal, which is this one right there. I want this in the middle of the screen with the gap at the bottom, how it's got the crest knocked off. You see that big gap on it? Notice I said the crest and not the root. That gap. You don't want that. You don't want them to touch. Uh, that would help score it. What you do want touching are the flanks. But on, on one side, both sides is no really, uh, that's just to keep, for, you know, I guess vibration would be nice, but uh, uh, that's like a different class bolt altogether. It's a class, like class 5 bolt. So what I'll show you here is that you see it's hitting one side of the root, not both sides. That's that play that you can push a screw back and forth. That one is loose. A bolt, a nut. I can't show you this in a butt, bolt nut this time. I can't get that creative yet. I've got to cut open a bolt to do that. and I can't get the fine cut yet. I've attempted a few times working on that fine cut. So right now I'm using two screws which have the same tolerances which is uh, not exactly true data but it's giving you an idea. Why? Because they have different thread counts, um, um, variations in the construction, but, uh, but it gets you to the point that you can see the uh, one side is not in contact, but the other side is. So that ends that video, but at least now you see what's going on. You see what a root looks like, the flat part of the root. root. Uh, you see the flanks, how they're 60 degrees, uh, 30 degrees on each side. 60 degrees is the total between the two of them. The uh, crest is the very top. And this is the, the tolerances that everyone looks for. You like to have it as close to possible, like you saw there, just kind of fairly missing it. That way you keep intact the major. The minor root. The minor. This is this ball is 15 years old. This is a 2,000 year 2,000. This is 15, 18 years old ball, maybe 19 year old ball, in great condition, class eight. So right there's the root, and that's the flank up top here. This little shoulder from here, from the crest to the root, is the flank. Crest to the root is the flank. Of course, the crest itself is the crest. A lot of people knock that down with file, like you, you've heard, uh, you, they used to tell you they use a file to knock it down. Well, you don't knock it down evenly. You could create a high crest and, and it can cut one of the roots. Doing so would weaken the roots. You'd be scoring the roots, changing the dimensions of the, uh, the, the structure. Now, that would be all fair, and fair, fair if, you, uh, if you calculated that, but you can't you know, calculate that. So just cutting the roots, just running a file across the top is nice, but verifying an accurate bolt using a tap afterwards and using a high accuracy tap 
and rotating it in a tap to, to knock it down. I'd like to see what it looks like. This looks like after I run it through a tap. So you see what it looks like before a tap. It's a rolled bolt. Now we're going to see what it looks like with a tap. 